Hello, I am Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 73 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. I wasn't sure if I was going to tape this week because I didn't know how much knitting I would get done, but I went and saw my grandson Oliver on Sunday afternoon, and oh my gosh, he was so cute. And then I went to, again, on Tuesday. Um, and then I also, on Wednesday and Thursday, I wasn't home to knit at all because um, I was working at the Dallas Apparel Mart in one of the shoe showrooms there. So I didn't know how, how much I'd get done, but because I went to Plano on Sunday, I can't just sit in the car. It's about a 40-minute drive. So I started at Baby Hat, and I finished it. It's just, just a simple one. I, I did a twisted rib stitch on the bottom. This is some yarn I had. I think it's the Plymouth baby paint pots yarn that I lost the um, wrapper, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And I'm going to get this with the baby blanket I made for my nephew's um, little boy. So I finished that. And then I just got, I mean, I guess Monday, Tuesday, I did get some knitting done and I finished my sweater on Friday night. Super excited. I absolutely love this. Okay. I'm going to stand up because it, I don't know if you can see, I did the twisted rib on the neck and then I did let, I like it rolled up on the sleeves and then I did the twisted rib on the hem. I love how this, the colors pulled up. It is the um, Queensland Karens that I used and I got this on sale and on the lamp half price. And this is a perfect example of how this retailed for $16 a ball and I got it for $8. So I made this sweater for $25 worth of yarn versus 50. And I'm just gonna be honest, it would be really hard for me to pay $50 for yarn to make a sweater for myself because I'm not always successful in what I make. And although this is, and that's why, but $25, it was worth the risk. But I ended up buying, I didn't know how much yarn I was gonna need, so I ended up buying six balls of this. So I did spend $50 on the yarn, but I knew I would probably be able to make another something else with it, but I didn't want to, because it was on clearance, I didn't want to run out of yarn. And it took three skeins, but this is what's left over the third skein. So it was easily three skeins, but I learned my lesson with that one red sweater that I ended up donating that when you run out of the color dye lot that you want, it's you, the odds of you going back to find it are really slim. So that's why I bought, I just bought all of what she had in stock because it was only $8 a piece. And this will also make a pretty prayer shawl for somebody. I honestly, I, I just can't tell you how excited I am. I finally have something that I'm proud of and that I know I can wear. Um, and I'm going to look and see if this, um, this was the, uh, I think it was Two of Hands was the name, uh, is who made, who made this, designed it. And I'm going to see if maybe she has a long sleeve version of something similar because her instructions were super easy for me to read. I didn't make mistakes um, because of the way she had it written out. Again, that was the paid version, and it was well worth every penny. And I like to support my um, local knitting, or not my, I'd like to support knitting designers because, you know, they gotta make, they've got to make money too. So that was finished. Super, like I said, super excited. And then I, um, I'm just trying to use up yarn. And, um, oh, gosh, I just see a stitch that I dropped when I was uh, decreasing. So I'll have to fix that. But this is a garter rib stitch hat. I used double strands of the yarn that I had made my short sleeve cardigan with. And then these are just pom-poms I get on Amazon where you can um, sew a button right there. And that's got elastic so you can remove the pom-pom to wash it. So I finished this will be um, probably, I might, I'll probably don donate this for the elementary school um, age hats. Um, so I got that done. And then again, I'm trying to just use the yarn I have without buying anything. Um, this is going to be probably for a homeless hat. Um, I, this purple yarn, I just had one little, it was a, a full skein and it was Debbie Bliss and it was it's beautiful, nice wool yarn, I think, and it was donated, um, but it wasn't enough. I could have made a baby hat with it, but I don't want to make a baby hat with wool yarn. So I, I just used, oh, look at see, things just kind of fall out everywhere. Um, so I had this pink yarn left over, so I just striped it. I did a twisted rib stitch on the bottom and then I made a pom pom and I used up both the pink and the purple yarn. So this will be for a donation for the um, homeless. So I got a lot done, I think this week, thinking I wouldn't get anything done. Now next week I probably will not be taping because it is Easter weekend and my daughter and her husband are coming to town. And so 
you know, Sunday's typically the day I would tape something. So we'll see. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a lot of knitting done. I don't have any projects going on right now, which is really odd for me. But I will probably start on that prayer shawl. I've been talking about starting on with this yarn here from a Fiber Lady. This is because this will take me a little while. And typically when I'm working on a prayer shawl, I'll work on that and I'll maybe make a baby hat or a homeless hat or a hat for our elementary school children. So those are some things. And I might even go through some of my patterns. I've got, um, because I've got a lot of the bamboo yarn to make, I can make some more of the chemo head scarves. I found another pattern that's more of a head wrap. I might work, look at that and work on that. And then because it is Easter, I don't know if you guys remember, when I was going through my yarn, I found this little rattle that um, my friend Patty helped me repurpose a baby booty that I had made. I'm going to give this to Oliver, but because he's, you know, he's only, you know, now he'll be two weeks old um, by the time Easter rolls around, but he's going to be too little for any type of gift, but he can appreciate at one point my little rattle. So those were, that's all that I did this week. Um, didn't give any gifts away. Sometimes when I'm working at the apparel mart, I will give um, a gift card in either a coffee cozy a cup or a gift card holder, and I ran out of those. So markets in June again so I need to make sure I make some of those because I just really like to bless the the people that are either the custodians that that are cleaning up um, the apparel mart or the people that are working odd hours for to make sure we get safely across the street those are things I just like to have on hand and actually that's what I could knit this week I can make a couple of those and because the gift card holders I felt them and so I like to make a big batch of them at least five or six and I found out my friend Patty has a washing machine with the agitator which makes it so much easier to felt when you have an agitator so I'm gonna those might be things I'm gonna work on I, I just I don't know I just pray for the Holy Spirit to lead me uh, on what I should be making I just have to have my hands moving at all times I don't know why but I just love it's just therapeutic for me that's part of the reason this leads me to writing another therapy of mine and that's my blog post for this week on knitprayshare.com and it's called praying for our church leaders and the scripture is 1st Timothy 1 through 4 I urge you first of all to pray for all people ask God to help them Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for the kings and all who are in authority so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And so I, I that was a lot, I know, a mouthful, but I wanted to include all four, all four of those uh, verses because it says to intercede on others' behalf, to pray for our leaders, and not just our leaders, but, you know, our church leaders, uh, I, I interpret that as, and because this is what pleases God, in, in, interceding and praying for others on his behalf, and he wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth, and that's part of what the church does. And I, before I write, sit down and write a blog post, I just I just say, you know, Lord, just what do you want me to write about this week? And so I just was writing on some about something else, totally something different, and then when I went to church this past Saturday evening, I was convicted to write about something else. We had a guest speaker. He was wonderful. He talked about the history and the term of the blood of the lamb and about Palm Sunday. It was very informative. I enjoyed it, but that's not what pricked my heart. It was him at the end of the sermon said, hey, you know, you guys, you need to really be praying for the church. This is a big, a big Sunday coming up and um, just pray for your church leaders and in preparation for these Easter Sunday services. And I thought, you know, he's right. I don't think I've ever really written about this before to, sp to specifically pray for our church leaders in, pre in preparation for the holidays that are the big ones. You know, typically Christmas and Easter, those are the two times people that don't normally go to church will go to church. And that's speaking from somebody that used to be my life. It used to be, I, I was raised in the church, but I didn't, you know, really, I didn't have a personal, I hadn't accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So for me, I felt like, well, I need to go for Christmas and Easter. And to me, you know, Easter was almost a bigger deal than Christmas because we would go Christmas Eve um, and Easter, you know, you got all dressed up and, you know, you went shopping for an Easter dress, you know. So to me, I didn't understand the significance of Easter really being more important because that's when Jesus was resurrected. I, I do now, now that I, you know, I, I am a believer, that I know is 
even more important. Of course, we had to have the cradle to have the cross, but man, Jesus, what Jesus did for us, that's, that's the story. That's the story of the gospel. Currently, I go to a larger non-denominational church, and between Wednesday and Sunday, our church will have 18 church services across three different campuses. That is a lot. And um, because I am part of a bigger church, too, they do, they're do they able to um, do other things. We have signs we can put in our front yards to let people know about our church and the service. We have these cards. I have them somewhere. Here they are. That shows... Um, it says Easter, and it has all the church times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hole punch it and maybe attach it to some gifts. If I'm able to, I will um, give this along with a knit gift. But, you know, if I'm going to, if I see a gentleman that I feel like I need to give this to, I don't have any guys' gifts knit um, that I can give to them. I don't have, that's why the gift card holders, I really should try to make those. But I know I'm not going to have time to make them and get to my friend Patty's house and felt them in time. Um but this is just a good thing for me to give. It's got a QR code they can scan on it also. But, you know, I, I last year at my mom's assisted living, I gave these to some of the people that work there, and I, I let them know which, which service I was going to attend. Um, and I'm also going to volunteer at one of the services so I can let them know about that. But I'm just praying for God to open the door for me to for an opportunity to be able to give these cards away. And um, like I said, you know, I, I give this card. I, and before I give the cards to someone, too, I just silently Pray, Lord, just soften their hearts, prick their heart, that they will be receptive to receiving this card. And they might throw it in the trash. I don't know. But that's between them and God. I just am obedient and I listen to that nudge when God tells me to do something. You know, for our pastors and our worship team and staff, we can pray for them to boldly proclaim God's truth of salvation being found in only Jesus. Ask for, I, I'm going to ask for the Holy Spirit to empower them to preach sound doctrine without fear of being canceled. You know, the gospel, it can be offensive. And I'm just going to pray for the strength for them to be able to do that, for them to faithfully fulfill their calling. For, for the pa Because, you know, our pastors, they are prime targets for criticism op and opposition. I can only imagine how discouraging it can get for them to receive those emails or the posts on social media. So I'm going to pray for God to give them wisdom, strength, and endurance, especially, you know, the pastor of the church where I am, 18 services, he needs endurance. And, you know, and we pray for protection of them and, the, and their family. I mean, these are all things we need to be praying now, especially for this upcoming Easter service. But it's something we do all year long for our, our, our church and for the, the leadership at our church. They need our prayers. They need us to cover them in prayer all the time. They're not immune um, to bad things happening or criticism. So we just need to build them up, you know, so that they can pour into us. As I mentioned to you, if you're able to volunteer at church, I am. So, you know, I'm going to. And so I, if you're able to, I would just encourage you to do it because this is another way to support our church staff. Being a greeter, uh, usher, or working the coffee or, you know, passing out, you know, more of these for people. Because, you know, if I'm there on Wednesday night. I would encourage people, hey, can you, you know, pass these out to friends and neighbors? We've got more services Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Maybe being a greeter doesn't seem like something that's very significant to you, but your warm and welcome smile might be exactly what, what the person needs to soften their heart to listen to the message that's being preached. You never know how God can use you to bring someone closer to Jesus. I'd like to end with my prayer now. Father God, I give you thanks for leading me to a church where leaders are preaching biblically sound doctrine. I pray for church leaders, staff, and worship teams around the world as they prepare for Resurrection Sunday. Pour into them so they can pour into us. May they stay true to your message and your word. I pray for the unchurched to be led to an Easter service where they will experience your presence. Remove the scales from their eyes to see the truth of the gospel. May lost souls find hope in Jesus. Use me this week to be a beacon of light in someone's dark day. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for episode 73 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Find me on social media. Follow me. Tag me when you make things that you're um, knitting, crocheting, and praying over. I just love to see how you're blessing people in your community. Um, and I, like I, I've shared before, I just carry uh, one of those reusable totes that I have, and I put all my knitting projects that are finished, and I have tags where I have a scripture on it and let the person know I'm praying for them. Um, and that's just, that's one way I feel like I can, um, in a non-threatening way, share the gospel to those that may not 
know Jesus. God bless you and have a great week. And I will see you for episode 74, whether it's next week or the week after, I don't know yet.